Hello Foam Warriors, I'm Dr. Flux and today we are looking at the Zombie Strike Minigun. This thing is just a beast. I was going for just a massive build and I think I pulled it off. Today we're going to look at how I built this thing, we're going to look at some of its performance, we're going to take this thing outside and have fun with it, check out how much capacity and rate of fire and all that fun stuff. So stick around and let's dive right into this awesome iconic build. So a little background about this blaster before we get started. This build started about six to seven months ago when I found a couple of Prometheus at Ross. Uh, they were on sale for $60, so I grabbed two. One I knew I was gonna mod, the other one I just wanted to keep stock. And I also like the idea of taking the battery from one and using it for the other one because it's a rechargeable battery. So I have one stock one with two batteries, which is pretty cool. Uh, now I'll actually have a couple hoppers for the stock one because I probably won't be carrying around another hopper for this thing because it's just not needed. So that's when this started. I saw some videos online of how to wire these up and one video was Captain Xavier's in which he wired this up for 3S LiPo. I knew from watching that video that I needed some type of chain gun type attachment on the front. I just didn't know which one. I wanted something original so when I first saw the Titan, I knew that would be the perfect extension to build a chain gun. However, I couldn't find a Titan. And Titans were very expensive for a long time, and they still are. So it wasn't until recently that I found one at a Goodwill for like $7. And yeah, now I could keep moving forward with this build. And full disclaimer, I already tried this with some other stuff. And I, I had some really bad... Uh, burnouts with the motors and the gears and doing this turret rotation is actually a little bit tricky so i wanted to take a, a fully tested system for this size of turret and uh kind of just bring it over to this platform and that was the titan essentially the other piece of it was the god hopper because to kind of complete this build and its ridiculousness it needs a massive hopper it's either that or a backpack but i didn't want to go like completely captain xavier I wanted to build it a little bit different, so I figured a big hopper would be nice. That way also, instead of dismounting a backpack and all that stuff, you just take this thing and give it to someone. So it's a really quick and easy handoff, which I like. I like that idea that here, now you're awesome. You know, you don't have to mess around with taking straps off and gear and all this stuff and all the things that are attached to a, a proton pack. You just pass this blaster on and someone else is now ready to rock. Another component of this build that was kind of holding me back was this bottom uh, fuel cell looking thing, the battery pack. When you pull out the LiPo, I didn't want to sacrifice the stock one. I wanted to find a good shell to put my LiPo in. And at the time I couldn't find any files or anything really until recently I saw someone on Thingiverse had created one. I'll go ahead and put a link in the description, but this thing is perfect. It is an identical replica of the stock battery pack with a big compartment where you can put your lipo in so that really helped complete this after putting this thing all together it just seemed like it was missing something 
And that's why I ended up adding these hoses. Now, when I first saw this thing, the God Hopper, it really made me think of like Command and Conquer. And I'm not talking about the recent stuff. I'm talking like, you know, 90s, early 90s, mid 90s. The first Command and Conquer game had flame tanks, which were these big tanks with this big flame thing on the back look just like this. And it had these flame turret type guns. I will, when I saw this, I wanted to kind of build that into a blaster because I just love how it looks. And so by adding these hoses like this, it kind of gives that look. And in my opinion, kind of completes the overall build. Now the first discrepancy people are gonna think when they see this is it's too big, it's too unwieldy. And I would agree for a lot of people, you, this is not something that you can even wield on the battlefield. So my whole philosophy of this type of stuff is I'm an adult, I'm playing with kids toys, so I might as well carry kid type toy things that only adult could carry. So it's quite clear that this thing cannot be wielded by a kid. I don't know, it just kind of like makes it feel more like this is an adult toy. So let's take a moment to kind of look at the actual, kind of some of the build. I didn't do a full documentation of the entire build, but I showed some key components as to how I made this thing work. So let's go ahead and jump right into that footage. So before we get into all the nitty gritty, I wanna just take a moment to talk about my modding process. My philosophy is to use components to join blasters in a way that could be converted into like a 3D printed part in the future. So for this build, I kind of started with a redesign of where the barrel attaches. This is all stock, I didn't change anything on here. But up here, this piece right here is custom. Now for the Prometheus, aside from the complete wire rewire, this is probably the most important part of this mod. And what this allows is a barrel mounting point and it has been mechanically secured. There's been glue. I've done exterior putty work and I've also even used some Bondo on here to just smooth it all out to make it look like it's, you know, a part that is all one piece. But this is the main piece. Now up here, if you uh, notice, I've removed a lot of the safeties and locks and stuff. I've made it to where I believe as soon as you start this, it will just start revving and then this is the fire trigger. I think that's reversed on the normal Prometheus, and I didn't like it. I like this being the fire trigger. Now back here, you notice that, you know, we are no longer using the old power supply, so I found this really cool part. This is on Thingiverse, and what it is is just a replacement for the stock battery compartment, and it looks exactly like the other one. But as you can see, now you can put a LiPo in there and it feeds in from the top. That's why I had to go up and around. I also secured it here so that this wire isn't going all over the place. But yeah, it just goes right in there. And then once it's in, you have access to kind of pull this cord out, put your LiPo on, and then seal it all up. And I, from what I can tell, it seems like it's like water resistant. Not waterproof, but I could, if water is kind of splashing up on this, I, it looks like this thing would kind of keep most of the water out, which is cool. The other part of modding is to break things into sections. What you see right here is the first section. This is obviously the Prometheus. And this in itself is a, is a full job. In fact, I, I did this uh, rewire like way back, uh, probably about six, seven months ago when I first got my Prometheus. And yeah, it's just been uh, kind of sitting around. I tried building a new barrel turret on this and it burned out the motors and I just didn't have much, much success. And so I was waiting for a Titan front end. Now I plan on doing, uh, so I did cut this off. So I plan on wiring this up to the top and probably out this part here, I'm probably gonna be attaching this uh, wall mounted XT60 connection. And that will allow for me to you know, basically quick disconnect the barrel and still maintain like a, a kind of a neat and tidy, you know, point to plug the, cause the front end of the barrel has a motor and a switch. I'm also gonna look into putting a plug on this cause I don't like having exposed ends like that. Cause essentially I feel like, I mean, it's harder to hit it with the, I mean, it is somewhat safe, but I, I'd feel better if I had a cap. So I'm gonna look into that, see if I can find a cap. Because when converting over to that mode, so what I'm trying to do is it's modular, so I can convert it to its base mode. 
I would keep, you know, the original handle that I could slap on and then plug the front. And what else? There's another thing I'd have to do. Oh, I probably would have to change this front barrel, maybe put a piece of orange tape. That's not too hard. I might just do that during, um, during this build. Basically just put some orange on the end of the tip. The thing about the Prometheus front end is like this actually looks like the barrel, so it almost works. But for safety's sake, it's actually a good idea just to tag out where the darts or, you know, ammo or whatever is coming out. So that pretty much covers this stuff. I'm gonna go ahead and build this off camera. I'm just basically putting all this stuff back together. If you need a more in-depth, in detailed build guide on how to rewire Prometheus, uh, I'll put a link in the description because Captain Xavier already made a very decent one and that's actually the one I used for this. So let's move on to the next part. So in this next part, I just wanted to demonstrate that I've kept this thing basically in a configuration where this is like stock. It's just a 3S Prometheus. And if I just want to take it, you know, as a regular Prometheus, I can. So I'm pretty happy to retain this original aesthetics and look. I did throw a little uh, band of tape on here just to, for safety for the barrel. But yeah, everything works fine. Uh, I disabled the lock so you can have this open and still use it. And this can easily be changed out for you know, the other hopper. All right, so let's talk about the barrel because this is the interesting part of the mod. Now everything up, this whole area is just cosmetic essentially. This is just to make the blaster look super cool. And that's why I wanted it to be able to be taken off because that way I can use it in different capacities. You know, I could, you know, kind of lug this thing around and just look like a, a super crazy heavy, but at the same time I can take it all off and actually use it in an actual practical, you know, war or whatnot. So I just wanted those options. Now these hoses, these has kind of completed the build for me. I wanted something to kind of look like the flame tank from Command and Conquer. For those of you that are, uh, kind of old school and remember the original Command and Conquer flame tanks that Nod had. Uh, that's what this hopper reminded me of. So I wanted something to come out the front. I wanted these to look like tanks, you know. And what I found was these drainage hoses and then some PVC. And I actually puttied these on and I kind of trimmed it down and made it so that these connectors can just kind of just connect on there and they, they stay really well. I don't even have to clamp them or anything because there's no pressure on them. And that works. So this part here is just a T. This is a, I believe it's a one and a quarter inch PVC pipe. You can use all kinds of different sizes. The sizes don't really matter. This is just aesthetics. And I put a couple elbows on there. And then inside here, I did a little donut of putty and just shoved it in. So these things are like locked into place. I also put some brass inserts on here and they basically allow this thing to mount solid very securely right here. And because I use two, it doesn't rotate or anything. So that's the purpose of that. Let's pop this thing open so I can show you the most important pieces of the barrel. These are custom pieces that I had to kind of fabricate. Here we go. So first up, if you've not seen inside of a Titan, there's a little gearbox in here and uh, basically just spins this little track and it's got these little rollers. I will be greasing all this up so we have a nice smooth motion. But unlike the Titan barrel, I had to replace mine because the Titan barrel has a nice wide part up here and then it cuts down to a small little elite sized barrel. So I didn't really need that, so I had to take that out. Also, I had to basically customize this end. This is all glued into place now, but essentially it has putty to kind of, to kind of build up a, a lip in there. So we have a nice transition and the back tube is smaller than the, op the mouth that opens up. So we can't have any rounds getting stuck in there. There's also no hop up with this system. So could be a problem, probably going to have a lot of drop in, in uh, the rounds, but we'll be, we'll do some testing. A lot of it too is like this thing is for, uh, some somewhat close engagements. So I'm not too worried about the, uh, the drop, but if it's really bad, I might have to reconsider maybe adding some hop up in here somehow. 
So other than the barrel inside here, we've added a MOSFET. I wanted to retain all this ele original electrical in the motor. I don't need the motor spinning really fast. So I figured I'd just retain it all and then throw a small MOSFET from out of darts. That's what this is. This lead right here is the switch, which I've connected. I'm going to connect here. It is a three position. So, I mean, I, if I wanted to add something else, I could. It's all I had. I just, I didn't have a, a single position switch. So uh, this is a, a three position. But basically, I believe this is off, off, and then that's how you turn it on. I wanted to also make it so you can turn the circuit off. That way, you could potentially increase your FPS a little bit and also prolong your battery and still maintain the look. But if you're just completely done with it, you just pull it all off. So I want to give some options there. So for now, I'm going to solder this up wire this up to the top and I have an XT60 connection right here. So I'm probably going to have to add some wire. This one I'm going to have to somehow figure out how to do more of a 90 degree wiring, which uh, isn't too hard. Basically you just make a 90 degree bend in the cables or in the wires. And then when it fills all up with solder, it basically makes it hardened. And I think I'll still be able to slip some heat shrink on there. But let me do that. I'm going to do that off camera because this is just more soldering work. And I'm also going to put this barrel together and then go over, you know, basically the final functionality of it. Okay, I don't know how much of this I can get in frame. <laughs> this thing is ridiculous. So these, these, like I said, go on to here. So I don't really have to show that. But I will put the hopper on here. This comes off for this configuration. I have a 90 degree plug that I made. I haven't tested it yet. It's gonna be interesting to plug this in, but essentially I've got a plug installed down here. So that will go into there and then the whole thing slides on. I don't think I can do it on camera, but I just wanted to show how that looks. So yeah, it's a 90 degree. And then that will slide onto there. These tubes will hook on there and that's how it comes together. I am thinking about doing maybe like a, some type of bungee from here that goes around the handle and just kind of secures everything in place when it's all done. But it's not really needed. It just kind of gives me some reassurance that, you know, this thing is securely locked in place and won't fall off. Right now, the fit on this tube to this coupler is very tight, so I don't I don't anticipate a problem right now, but I could see in the future, maybe this could loosen up and that would be a, a second point I could attach to. So after getting this thing all put together, it was time to do some tests. The first thing I wanted to do was just to kind of, as a sanity check, kind of get an idea of what these hoppers hold. On 3D printed solid, they say that this thing holds, I believe 1200 rounds. That's pretty accurate. I was able to squeeze uh, a bit more, but, the thing with these hopper systems is you need that agitator, kind of some room to, to move around or they don't work. So anything over that capacity that they usually quote to you, you're doing this at your own risk and you could potentially cause jams and feeding issues. But me personally, I did some tests in which I loaded this up to like a safe operating load and that was about 1,120. So, I mean, I, I could see it going up to 1,200, that's not, out of out of the ballpark and uh, a normal hopper just a regular prometheus hopper holds i got mine up to 280. i believe that one's supposed to, is right around 250 or so so yeah that's that's a lot of rounds you know that's uh if you if you run out of ammo with this thing uh, you're probably doing something wrong you should probably end up getting tagged before running out of ammo especially if wielding this massive turret uh, it's just it's going to be too hard to be flexible and maneuver to get all the tags you need to get in an HVZ. But man, this thing is gonna look epic. Now, the reason, another reason why I built this is I actually wanna run something like this in an HVZ. And I know what a lot of you are thinking, I will probably be uh, killed by zombies pretty quickly, but you know what? It depends on the team you're with. So uh, I hope to have a good support supporting team to help facilitate me being a heavy. So we'll just have to see how it goes when uh, wars and stuff finally pick up again. So let's also talk about some of the configurations for this blaster. 
I wanted this thing to be a little bit modular because I want to do other stuff with it. I even considered putting this bear on other blasters, other builds. And so I wanted it to come off. And I also gave it its own electrical circuit. I gave it a shut off right here so you can turn it on and off. And then I also gave it an XC60 connection so I can basically plug it into other systems and have a functioning turret. This uh, popper right here is uh, connected to the blaster with these quick disconnects. So it's not really a big deal. They just pop off and you can slap it on pretty easily. There is no load or anything or no pressure, so it's not really a big deal. Usually these things have clamps, but this is just aesthetic, so it doesn't really matter. I can still put on the old hopper. I can drop off the nose and then, you know, use the old hopper. So it pretty much looks like just a standard 3S Prometheus. So that's nice. Or I can just run it with a God hopper and no barrel. That's still a really good option. Uh, a realistic loadout in an actual HVZ would be probably that. Having the barrel on here is just kind of uh, adding to just the overall look of your loadout and is unnecessary, but looks badass. Grab a couple numbers here. The first one will be with the barrel. If I can line this up. And let's try this without the barrel. See if we get a, a increase. So it kind of looks like a five, five to 10 FPS gain average. Okay, so now we're gonna do some tests. So I have a standard hopper here. We are gonna dump this out and just see how fast we can shoot off all these rounds. And that way I'm just gonna do a little math and get kind of like average fire rate. All right, so three, two, one. And done. Uh, let's talk about paint. So why did I choose the Zombie Strike uh, color scheme? Well, that's simply because 3D Printed Solid sent me this hopper. Uh, I pretty much reached out to them and said, you know, I don't care about the colors. I'm probably gonna paint it anyways. Uh, do you have any laying around? And uh, Greg was nice enough to say, you know, I, I could buy his. So he sent me his. And uh, I paid full price, everything, got here real quick. I know if you order these now, they take a long time to print, a long time to ship. So keep that in mind if you're looking to try to get one. Uh, basically though, when I got it in hand, I thought, you know, that looks so nice. I'm just gonna do the whole, the whole blasters, I'm gonna do a zombie strike. And uh, I'm glad I did because this is a very unique build that I, I don't have any really good epic zombie strike looking stuff. So now I do. But in the end, would I recommend other people doing this type of build? For sure. I think this is just phenomenal. I would love to see more people with just ridiculous giant blasters like this. If you're looking to build something like this, uh, I'm always available if you have any questions. Uh, there is no like Arduino or smart system in here. This is just a, a standard, you know, pull the trigger fire kind of thing, just a big burst. The only difference between this and like, you know, a Percy's or whatnot is we've added a motor for you know, just spinning the barrel up front. But other than that, it's, it's pretty much the same thing. Well, I'm Dr. Flux and that pretty much wraps up this build. This is the largest build I've ever done. As you can see here, this used to be the biggest thing I ever had, the GL. Still massive, <laughs> but yeah, this thing just can't even compare to the size of this thing. This is my first big build that I did, which was the Behemoth. And yeah, it's even a fraction of the size. So as you can see, I obviously like building big, ridiculous blasters. Let me know in the comment section if there is an idea you want me to try. I uh, always like to see new ideas and might actually try building one. I wanna thank you for watching this video. 
If you have not yet done so already, please like, comment, and subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you can see when I make new content. And as always, happy foam flinging. Thank you.